So, you're not averse to taking a little trip? As I mentioned earlier, the request comes from the adventurers Gil and Ulda. Once you see, once you arrive, seek out Mamodi, the proprietor of the quicksand. He confers a sultana version of myself. Chances are she'll send you to the midst of danger, but I have every confidence in you can pull through unscathed. Pull this. I'm a giant kitty running around like a badass. Okay. I could just teleport. Oh, I, I can't go that way. It's the other way. I knew that. I could just teleport, but I'm going to hit. Oh, I can't. What? Fuck you, invisible walls. I can see it right there. I can't hurt myself. Fine. I'll go down the stairs like a fucking pleb. Hit. Nope. Hit. Oh, that's right, because that's the arrivals. Okay. Suddenly that makes more sense, but I'm still mad that I have to walk down like a pleb. Ulda, yes, please, and thank you. But, um, the, the storyline, from what I remember of it, and again, I'm replaying this because I don't remember most of the details. I remember certain story beats, but I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything because it's a fucking Final Fantasy game and they're known for being convoluted as shit. And as mentioned, I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, I remember that being a big story beat later from these people. By the way, pseudo spoiler alert. <coughs> but, you know, I want to try and... I remember some story beats and I do remember the story getting really, really good in like the late 40s and once you hit level 50 the story actually gets really good but you have to suffer through some like just like why this is so stupid why am i doing this level bullshit it is kind of a slog and this um you know this the streamlined version or whatever this is it is better but again you're, you're still dealing with kind of you're dealing you're still dealing with the same story you're just dealing with less of the bullshit steps so, you know, one of the things that they did was, you know, you get a quest that's like, hey, you know, dump a, you know, dump a bucket of water onto our, a rowdy guest at this bar. And you do that. Cool. Well, the original version, you know, you got the quest, but it was like to grab a bucket, then go to the water, then fill the bucket with water, then take it back to the proprietor and let the proprietor tell you to dump it onto a guy that's actually being, you know, a rowdy jackass. And I'm like, why did that take seven steps? I don't understand. What is this? Why? Why are you doing this to me? This is stupid. So they cut a lot of that bullshit out. And they did actually just straight up cut some quests out entirely. Like, I think those quests still exist, but they're like side quests now. You don't have to do them anymore. But, um, you know, so they did, they did cut some stuff out. So it is definitely a lot faster. And the bullshit quests, like the stupid parts of it, are a lot faster to go through. Like, they're not nearly as painful as they used to be. But you still, but I mean, if you were looking... Or something that is a completely revolutionary change, like they just cut out entire parts of the story you don't like. Yeah, no, that ain't happening. And I, I feel you because that's kind of what I was hoping it would be. And I was super disappointed when I got to the Titan quest and was like, God damn it, I still have to get fucking wine for this guy. I still have to go to a, I still have to go to a dungeon to get cheese. Why am I doing this? Welcome to the quicksand, friend. I'm a tad busy right now, so if you wouldn't mind showing yourself to, judging by your determined expression, I take you ain't from here for ale. Are you going world record by any chance? Fuck yes. Oh, I didn't do the nod. I'm sad. Neone sent word that you'd be reporting for duty. She also made a point of calling you the adventure of the moment. And it was small praise coming from her. But you didn't come all the way here to listen to my prattle. Doubtless your ego was started, so let's talk business, shall we? Into a copper hell. Petitioner ought to be arriving any moment now. God's almighty. Another second under that sun, and would have been set afire. A tanker of ale, if you would be so kind. Papa Sean! Dude's kind of a pimp. I kind of like this guy. Excellent timing, Papa Sean. It just so happens the adventurer who will be handling your petition is here. So this strapping young lad is the much-lauded adventurer, is he? Marvelous, marvelous! A pleasure to make your acquaintance, good sir. I am Papa Sean, formerly of the Sultan Sworn. I thank you for agreeing to lend us your aid. He's like, yeah, no, that's that's one of the things that's... that's. I mean, they, they cut down some of that bullshit. Like, a lot of that stuff, they have cut down quite a bit of it, but it's it's still there. You know, unfortunately, that's just the nature of Final Fantasy XIV's questing, especially A Realm Reborn's questing. It's, it's full of that. I hear it's cut down a lot in Heavensward and Onwards, but that first bit, it's... It, you know, I mean, because to be fair, that was kind of the questing that... I mean, not to give him a free pass, but that was kind of the standard questing of you know, WoW and Rift and all that kind of stuff. That was kind of how it was done. It was stupid, but, you know, fetch quests were kind of the name of the game. 
Mayak, you'd like to apprise Garen of his mission? Yes, of course. The petition in question was submitted by the acquaintance of mine at Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. It relates to an unfortunate development at Copper Bell Mines. To be plain, giants have seized control of the place. Oh, that sounds unfortunate. These giants are of the clan known as the... Oh, what? Hecaton... Share... Hecaton Shares? The Hecaton Shares. The Hecaton Shares. The Hecaton Shares? How the... How the... What? Whatever, giants. Fearsome creatures who were sealed from the deepest depths of the mines during the bygone Thorn Dynasty. Alas, it seems they have managed to break through the layer of rock which to serve to imprison them and now prowl the tunnels where the miners ply their trade. The creatures are justifiably angry about their treatment at the hands of our ancestors, and their presence has forced us the suspension of all mining activities on the site. Gee, I wonder. I, I can imagine. It's no wonder they're angry. Didn't the Thorn Dynasty come to an age over 300 years ago? You know your history well, milady. The people of that age used the whatever the fucks to work their minds. By way of enchanted helms, they were able to bind the ferocious creatures to their will. As off the way of such tales, these enchantments eventually failed, and the slaves rose up against their masters. Gee, god, friggin'. Oh my god. Why? Okay. Topical. Sure. In a desperate bid to contain the unbridled fury of the giants, our ancestors introduced the collapse... Induced the collapse of the mine's lowermost level, so that it was the great giant revolt was ended, buried beneath a hundred thousand tons of rock. Yeah. Yeah. That's... that's... that's an... A nice bedtime story. How dare you get in the way of capitalism, crush. Well, now, that's got me thinking. I seem to recall there being an article about Copper Bell and the Mithril Eye a fortnight or so ago. It said the mines are being reopened as to meet the rising demand for building materials. Like as not, our boys dug a bit too deep and freed the giants. Is this one of those, like, Lord of the Rings references? Gosh, uh, to think the poor creatures are alive still kicking after three centuries. That's a long time to nurse a grudge. They must be seething. Indeed, and that makes them a danger to us all. There will be no mining at Copper Bell so long as they remain. Wait, that's your concern? Not the whole, like, hey, we may have just pretty much destroyed an indigenous species that I just straight up admitted that our ancestors are completely fucked over and they are justifiably angry, but seriously, they need to die because we need the shit in that mine full. That's, 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 that was your takeaway? That's your takeaway. You sure about that? Whatever. For the sake of both peace and prosperity, they must be subdued. This is the task for which- Okay. Alright. I'll not deny the mission will be rife with danger, but our need is great. No, you no, your need for pocket change is great. Cool. Sure. Nod. Whatever. God bless you. I feared you might have reservations, but I assure you it is for the best. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure it's for the best. Sure it's for the best. Hmm, in case you don't know, Copper Bell Mines are in Western Thanaland. Do take care, you hear? Oh, and one last thing before you depart. An employee of Amalja and Sons is presently in the quicksand. The fellow's name is Painted Mesa. He knows the Copper Bell Mines well. Blah, 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 blah. It may behoove you to seek his counsel. What? Painted Mesa! He's literally right there. Okay. Looking for Painted Mesa? You found him. So you're the adventurer who's volunteered to deal with the mess down in Copper Bell, are you? Got guts, mate. Hope you've got the skills to go with them, because things ain't pretty down there. The giants have left the place in a right state in nary a week after the mines resumed. I don't know if you know this, but Copper Bell was old when the Second Rule Dynasty was still young. It was abandoned centuries ago. Yeah, no, I just, I literally just got the history lesson, man. You don't need to repeat it, I promise you. But it had been for the shortest of materials needed for the rebuilding effort, the concert would have never thought to reopen it. We knew full well about the giants beforehand, but the project went ahead anyway. I mean, nothing could possibly survive being buried in a mountain's worth of rock for three centuries, right? Wrong. Eh. Yeah, no. No, see, what was buried under there was fucking karma. It wasn't giants, it was karma. That's why it survived. Spite. My miners dug up more than they could buy before one swing of that pickaxe too many, and they found themselves in the company of giants. Unless we can subdue them, the nation's glorious recovery will grind to the- Oh my god. Oh, things have to die for the sake of the economy. Oh, why, game? Why do you have to be so realistic? Sad face. Yay, capitalism. The storm torches will keep watch of the da ba da ba da ba do One of them will show you the way in. The nation is resting on your shoulders. Yes, let's let's subdue um, a literally oppressed people because, you know, capitalism is a thing. 
that we have to yeah sure okay cool cool we're cool we're not gonna think about it western so i need to go and rent yay horizon's already there so i can just automatically go there without thinking about it yay one of the only times i'll be lucky enough to oh my god look at this dude riding a chocobo look at this i feel like i'm breaking this poor thing's back look at that I look like I'm strangling him. Look at that. I feel so bad for this Jogobo. This poor thing. Oh no, it's amazing. And I love it with, with, with every last ounce of my heart. Whatever. You know what I meant. It's amazing and I love it. But I also feel so bad for that Jogobo. That Jogobo is just like, please. Please end my suffering. Please. It's a giant cat. He should be able to run faster than me. Why am I doing this? I do love Thanaland's music. I, I mean, I love the aesthetic of all the zones in this game. I mean, it's a theme park MMO, sure, but I love the aesthetic that all of them are so very different and they have their own style and the, their own appeal. You know, they don't... They do have some kind of personality to them, you know what I mean? I don't mean this to talk shit about other games, but, you know... You know, games like... And as much as I loved it at the time, games like Rift, you know, the, the zones kind of felt... Maybe not phoned in, but... And I mean, they were kind of beautiful in their own right, but they, they had this sort of... They didn't have as much person... Like, certain zones didn't really have much in the way of a personality. They were just kind of there, you know what I mean? Or there were two or three zones that looked very similar overall. That's... They're flying on a behemoth. Just, my world needs me! Shoom! Out you go. Okay. Alright. I'm going the wrong direction. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... Hum, bum, 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 Look at his run animation. Look at this. Look at him. He's trying so hard to go fast. Look at that. It's like, I'm trying. I'm trying to move, I promise. Poor thing. You get a pre for your PS5? Grats. Been playing a lot of Guild Wars 2. Yeah, I've been looking at that as well. Um... But right now, I'm kind of cracking out on Final Fantasy XIV. Again, like, I'm basically a video game tourist, so who knows how long I'm going to be doing this. Um, I definitely want to try playing leveling, leveling and WoW again once they get the pre-patch out, because I'm, like, six months sub, redid again, redidimified, you know, upped again. Re-upped, there we go, it re-upped again without me realizing it, so I've got the time. And besides, the leveling is super fast, and it's actually a lot of fun. The leveling is actually fun and WoW again. It's amazing. But, you know, I've, I've got a lot on my plate. Well, I mean, technically, yes, in IRL, I kind of got a lot on my plate work-wise. But, you know, in terms of gaming, I also have a lot on my plate that I want to do. There's been an incident inside Copper Bell Mines. We're here to ensure its effects are contained, but for your own safety, sex, you stay well away. Volunteer to quell the whatever the fucks. I didn't think the Papa Sean would be able to find someone so quickly, if at all. The giants are content to wreak havoc inside the mines for now, but it's only a matter of time before they think to come outside. You know, I, this is going to be a weird... A weird thought. You know, why not seal off the mine again? Like, I mean, you sealed it off before, just blow the fucking thing up again. There you go. Problem solved. They can't get out. You know, better than that going into quote-unquote subdue them. you got to kill them anyway. The sooner you see them, the better... Sure. All right. Please let me move. Thank you. Okay. Another jump into Duty Finder land. Where I had to get, get to kind of do my own thing. Oh, it only says five minutes. Let's see if it'll actually last that long. Look at that. Look at that pseudo HD bomb. Look at that. He's an angry bomb. He is an angry pumpkin. An angry floating pumpkin. That is actually huge because my cat's like seven and a half feet tall. Hi! Oh, he's camera shy. All right, well, whatever. Because it makes too much sense. To be fair, I mean, you could you could explain away most things in Final Fantasy XIV or just RPGs in general with, why don't you just blow it up? Or, you know, like, call the cops. Why am I doing this clearly shady bullshit that... What? The fuck is that? What? No! What is he wearing? What? 
The Emperor's new robe. Oh. Oh. The Emperor's... Okay. The Emperor's new clothes, right? Cool. The Emperor's new clothes, which is to say he's buck naked. Alright, that's... Okay. I just saw a, a naked cat man running around. Okay. It's... Okay. I'm just gonna walk in this direction. We're just gonna slowly walk away. We're just gonna RP walk away and pretend we never saw that. While he's got that weird knock kneed kind of pseudo waddle going on in the very strange posture. He can stand up straight. I've seen it happen before. So I don't understand why he prefers to have everything hunched over now, unless it's just because his, you know, trapezius muscles are that jacked. You know, his traps are that badass that, you know, they weigh down the rest of his body or something. I don't, I don't know. But you know what? I'm gonna pimp walk. I'm not gonna get very far. I'm not gonna pimp. I can't. Can't do it. Can't do it. But what I am gonna do is I'm going to run over to Vesper Bay here and get the chocobo. The chocobo point. I mean, granted, all the chocobo keep points become literally irrelevant the moment you get your own mount. Which kind of makes me sad. I really wish that it was sort of a... That there was... I mean, I, I love the fact that teleporting is a thing. But it also kind of makes me a little bit sad because it defeats the purpose of chocobo keeps. You know what I mean? The idea that you can use these mounts to kind of, you know, these basically flight points to kind of get from one point to another quickly. Ooh, hey. Hunting log. Die, Arbor Buzzard. Wait, why is an Arbor Buzzard? Don't they, aren't they normally localized in, uh, whatever your starting area is? Maybe not. All right, you know what I'm not going to... Oh, I get it, because Arbor Buzzards are in different zones. Oh, so I don't have to go to the Central Shroud. I can just do it here. Oh, game, it's like you planned for that stuff. That's so cool! I'm so easily amused by things that are completely irrelevant. But hey, you know what? Good job, game. Good job on, on planning for that kind of stuff. Don't judge me. But either way, I'm really hoping, you know, I kind of wish that Chocobo keeps retained their- Ow, what the f- Get off my arm, you dickbag ant. I think it's trying to bite me. I really probably should say bite me less often because the ants are starting to take it seriously. Um, I kind of, anyway, I kind of wish Chocobo Keeps kept their relevancy after you got your mount um, and wasn't pretty much immediately negated by the teleport function due to the Aetherite. But I mean, to be fair, certain Chocobo Keeps do kind of retain their relevancy because, as you can see, this area does not have an Aetherite, so you still need, you still ideally would have to use a Chocobo Keep to get here quickly without a mount. Having said that, once you get a mount, like, it's, it's literally irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. For all I know, I mean, the mounts were, they weren't a level cap thing, but I remember back in the day, you had to take time. Like, it was, it was a, a little bit, it was a bit of a grind to get your first mount. I think it was something like 2,000 of your, um, your particular grand company's crests. You had to grind 2,000 of them, which was not a super fast thing. You got the quest at level 20. And that means you had to do, um, basically you had to do a shitload of grind, uh, shitload of fates and grand company leaves to actually get that. So it was, I remember doing it back in the day and it was, it was a pretty, I mean, I say significant grind. Like most hardcore people are like, Psh, please, you could get that done in like a day. I mean, cool. But for somebody who's casual scum is, you know, that was a dedicated, you know, four or five days of logging on for an hour or two to do these damn fate grindings. Cause I don't necessarily want to do it, but I really want to mount. I just wish they'd, like, they'd been implemented a system where the chocobo keeps are actually were just somehow relevant. Like, you know, if you had a mount, the chocobo keeps were, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're already cheap, you know, or honestly, I just wish the teleport function, and as much as this would suck, I kind of wish the teleport function had a cooldown to it, you know, so you couldn't just immediately teleport. Sort of like the return, where, not the button I wanted to use, but return has a 20 minute cooldown. I kind of wish the teleport had like a 10 or 15 minute cooldown too. So you can teleport. But you gotta wait. You can't just, like, pop back and forth. Because, you know, while it's convenient, it also... It just... I don't want to say, like, my immersion! But it does kind of ruin the immersion a little bit. You know what I mean? But, I don't know. Color your world. Undecisively unfashionable adventurer. 
Now it's be good never in my life has seen such apologetic focus on function to extreme cost of form. The mere sight of you makes my eyes bleed. Fuck you, lady. As a lover of all things aesthetically pleasing, I cannot in good conscience allow you to continue roaming the realm in that sorry state. I believe your appearance can yet be salvaged through the use of color. I will teach you how to go about dyeing your outfit, but first I must have a drink. The heat is making me a vicious, giving me a vicious thirst and I won't be able to talk for any length of time. Be a dear and buy me a bottle of orange juice at the stall of the northern gates. Would you once have moistened my throat? We shall see to the business of remedying your appearance. Says the woman who's wearing all primate. No, mm -mm. Nope. Okay, you have another quest. Give me the other quest too. Oh dear, dear, dear. This will never do. My sense of aesthetics simply won't allow it. How can you possibly go out dressed like that? Because if I don't, I'll die, woman. My dear, if only you had a spare thought for style and coordination. I hope your garb holds up during a scuffle because there's little else going for it. That's literally why I'm wearing it. That's it. I've made up my mind. From this day forth, I'll take it upon myself to save you from any more fashion disasters. Let me see. So much needs to be addressed. Where to even begin? Be a dear and get me a drink. I'm feeling rather parched. In this matter, best discussed over a glass of something cold. Go to the pissed PS day. Pissed Piced? Sure. Pissed Piced and ask for Falkland. I have some blood orange juice and make sure there's no pulp in it. Oh my god. Cool. It's just like real life, but in a video game. Party privilege check, just being like, get me some things, would you? I need to make your life better by being more like me. Oh, Burgheim sent you, did she? That woman, I've never known anyone so lazy, would have killed her to come and get it herself. There you are. Shouldn't let her push you around, you know? Give her an ilm and she'll take a mom. I don't really know what ilms or moms are, but... Oh, mom. Excuse me, I know what moms are. But I feel you. How's that drink coming along? Here. Throw it in her face. Delicious, nothing better on a hot day. Some say I have expensive taste, but life's too short to settle for second best. Of course, it's extensive my choice of wardrobe, too. <laughs> Clearly. Now that I'm feeling refreshed, shall we get started? You know, dear, that you'd have a lot less drab if you know how to apply glamours. Glamour prism as a catalyst to protect the image of one item into another. It's an illusion, but very convincing. Stays the same, yada, 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 yada. If you fancy a change, just didn't have to stick with this. Da, 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 Thank you for giving me the RP lore reasons for why I can change my gear into whatever the fuck I want. I honestly don't really care. Audi biatch. Please let me walk. Please let me walk. Thank you for letting me walk. Wait a sec, I gotta buy this real quick. I'm buying orange juice. There we go. Uh, position myself in front of you. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Watch. Somebody went AFK. Anytime now. I'm just gonna run in a circle because I have an analog stick. The best part about having an analog stick is the ability to run in circles and make myself dizzy. I, I don't care about your fucking quest, lady. Gimme. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a die. Do not care. Now allow me to not... I've made it a thing to not skip any cutscenes, if possible. I wouldn't have skipped that mate ma, and I probably would have ended up skipping it because I'm just like, lady, shut up, I don't care. <laughs> yes, I can die in my gear, fantastic, wonderful. Shut the fuck up, please. I gotta give Squeenix all the credit in the world for their cutscene. Like, they're, they're always so damn flashy, especially for in-game stuff. It's always impressed me how they're able to get, you know, mix things so... Look at that. Cinematographic? You know. C cinematic. There we go. I words. How they can make things look so cinematic, you know, with in-game cutscenes. You know what I mean? It's something Blizzard could really stand to learn to do every so often. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're learning. It's just the, you know, like their pre-rendered cutscenes are always fantastic looking. But the in-game ones are kind of shit, to be honest with you. I guess we're just kind of attacking whatever. Cool. All right. That's fine. Take the tiny key. Okay, so this time, let's make sure that I don't... I don't leave somebody behind. 
off the elevator. All right, cool. I also like how I'm just like force wielding things instead of just grabbing anything. I'm just like, hold my hand out. Praise Jesus. There we go. The lever works. Hup. Hup. I'm not a tank. Can't fight the tanky tanks or the, uh, the tank for threat. I don't know how to play a tank next time around on my next journey to 50. The thing is, like, I know technically there's no, there's literally no real useful reason to have multiple characters since you can do everything on one character and there seems to be no real male function between people who are not on your friends list at the bare minimum, if I recall correctly. But at the same time, trying to level jobs to this game without the main story quest just feels so fucking laborious. Every time I try, I get maybe a half hour, 45 minutes into it, and I'm just like, I'm bored! Please give me a story to- Ow! Asshole. Don't you ninja gank me, fool. Even though the spriggans are adorable. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. You need to back up off me. Stop that. There we go. But, trying to level other jobs in Final Fantasy XIV just- I mean, you're, you're doing it the same way I guess you would do in WoW if you don't care about doing any of the, the zone quests or whatever. So you're leveling through dungeons, you level through fates, uh, there's also Palace of the Dead, which actually is super cool, having played it a couple of times. Uh, but it's one of those you have to actually beat 10 levels before you get a, uh, before your class actually gets experience at it, which can take a pretty hefty chunk of time if you're trying to do it by yourself. And because I hate people as a general rule, you know, I would prefer something like Palace of the Dead. I would, because it has very roguelike functionality to it, I kind of prefer playing that one by myself. It just seems more fun that way. And maybe it's more fun with a group as well, but it just, it's something that I'm currently preferring to try and play my, by myself, which means that it's going to be kind of time consuming. It's not exactly a super efficient way of leveling. And something like that is probably better doing fates, you know, and dungeons and stuff like that. It's just. Like, eh, but mom, I like playing with quests. Even though they can be really boring or whatever, it still feels like... It feels less of... Even though I literally know it's still experience grinding, it kind of feels less like a grind. It feels a little bit more masked because I'm kind of being like, okay, I'm being directed to go somewhere versus just being like, okay, well, here's four levels. Figure out what the fuck you want to do with them. Figure out how to get there. I'm like, but... I don't want to? But I'm also lazy, so there's probably that. I freely admit it. <laughs> Having said that, my primary goal for this character, as I think I've mentioned before, is that um, I'm just trying to basically replay the story to remember where I left off, so that way I can go back and play, start off with my... Uh... I'm still on the fence as to whether or not I want to do play with my character that's Darkwing Duck, or play on my OG main character who's like a level 55 Black Mage. Actually, at this point, I think I'm leaning towards Darkwing Duck, one, because the name is Darkwing Duck, and two, because I kind of like the Makote um, animations better, and I think I like Lancer better as a DPS class. It's more fun. They feel a lot more mobile. Maybe it's also because my Black Mage is level 55, and apparently that class doesn't get fun until like level 60 or something weird, I don't know. It actually is incredible how much the classes change as they level up. Like, they get really just job-defining things at like level 30, 40, 50, 65, or whatever. Like, they have entire mechanics that just don't exist, you know, until an, an expansion and a half in or something like that. That's what you say. I like dungeons, but I love questing. I really enjoy questing, and it kind of... You know, I kept hearing about New Game Plus, and I'm like, that's so cool, I can go back and level through, and it wasn't until I started playing after, you know, a few weeks ago that I found out, I was like, oh, New Game Plus is literally just story mode all over again. It, it offers no experience. It is there purely just to re-experience the story if you either skipped it or if you wanted to, you know, replay it for fun because you enjoy it. You know, so you don't have to level up a new character all the way through, you can just re-experience the story, which is cool. I mean, I can really appreciate that. I really respect that, that they added something like that for people who are story-driven to be able to, like, basically replay the game without having to go through the whole grind. I respect that. Having said that, I really wish 
that it offered some experience. I'm just like, man, I don't want to do fate grinding. Mom, I don't want to fate grind. You can't make me. Bow chicka bow wow. Having said that, I don't really mind. Um, I don't mind dungeons either. It's just one of those like... When it comes to a lot of dungeons, I really can't. I can't chain run dungeons. I never could. I've, you know, you see things in WoW or Rift or Ion or whatever, like people are chain running dungeons, you know, three or four times in a row. And I'm just, I, I, just, I don't have it in me. I don't have the patience. I get bored too quickly. I need to have variety, you know. Like I remember back in the WoW days of uh, uh, Wrath of the Lich King, you know, before Dungeon Finder, and you could only do, you know, one, you know, heroes had a daily lockout, so there would be groups that would basically their their entire thing was to group up and do every single dungeon every single day. You know, I mean there were pugs for the most part, but you would you would fly around and do all the dungeons on heroic mode, so that way you can maximize your badges, get whatever you need, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was like, man, fuck that! Like I'm gonna do the daily dungeon and that's it. Like maybe two or three, even with really good groups, I'm like, man, I get. I get worn out way too quick. I could not do all of them at once. I just don't have it in me. Whoops. <laughs> not the button I wanted to press, but that's fine. Give me my damage boost. Four for four. Also, coolest animation ever. I love Lancer's animations, though. They're so good. To be honest, I think that might be a good 35% of the reason why I kind of want to play a Lancer just because of this spell right here. It's so cool. I love it. It makes me so happy. Sadie, sadie. I don't even care if it doesn't do as much damage as the purple ability. Warple Thrust. Sure. I'm gonna run in a circle. Because I can. Ow, you dick. Why would you do that? You know, Lancers and Dragoons are cool as fuck. Like, I, I really enjoy. You know, I, I thought when I first started playing uh, my Darkwing Duck character, and again, I, I started playing that character largely because I was. I mean, honestly, the name was a troll name. Darkwing Duck was a troll name. I was just like, hey, you know, there's no way this can be... Oh, shit, that name is actually taken? Like, wait, that name is... Or that name is actually available? What the fuck? I, you know, it's just like, oh, you know what? I keep playing White Mage. I keep playing Archer. Let me try Lancer. And I didn't think I was going to like it very much. It's actually a lot of freaking fun. I mean, that's one of the reasons I got so far as I did while re-leveling that character. Because, again, I leveled that character because I couldn't, I had not played the story since, you know, 2013, so I didn't remember shit. I didn't remember anything except that I hated Titan's quest. I remember that, that I was just like, I remember something about Titan being really stupid, but I couldn't remember anything at all. But, uh, you know, I leveled him because I was trying to remember the story, and along the way I was like, damn, like, Dragoon is a lot of fucking fun. So it got to the point where, you know, I got to where my main character was, and I just continued playing Darkwing Duck because I enjoyed the class so much and also because he looked really badass in Dragoon Armor. So he basically ended up becoming my main because I just, I enjoyed the class so much more. Oh, I got a leather belt. Four stand, four stamina, or four stand, four strength, uh, uh, eh, eh, or whatever that sound effect was. I'm talking a lot again, so my throat's kind of jacked up. It's cool. It's not a habit, it's cool. I feel all right. Oh, is that the souls that are making that? The really cutesy, squishy sounds? I guess so. Yes, the Dragoon armor is baller as fuck. It makes me so happy. And I will say, but the cool thing is that Dragoon armor looks fucking awesome on everyone. Like, it doesn't matter what race, what class, whatever. It looks cool on freaking everybody. Like, Giant Catman in the intro, it, it, it you know, shrouds him in your, your AF armor, your artifact armor. Like, the Dragoon armor. Even though you can't wear helms as giant angry cat people. 
you know, they look so cool. He looks so, in fact, not having the helm kind of makes him look even more awesome because you just see like this giant specter of spiky death and you just see giant angry cat man's face and you're just like, ah! you know, the, the freaking Wal the, the Ralph Wiggum meme is like, ha ha, I'm in danger. It's that, you know, in giant angry cat man form. Like, even the freaking Lollafells look badass in it. Like, how do you make a Lollafell look badass? By giving him giant spiky armor. And a sphere that's like four times its size. Is how you do it. DPS race. Oh, he won. Oh, uh, well, no. I mean... It's a tie. I will accept the tie. Hmm. <laughs> Our sand is set, dude. I will never understand the yes-no things on here, because it defaults to no when it should default to yes, and it defaults to yes when it should default to no. I don't understand it. It makes zero sense to me. Oh yay, the first ad management fight. Lollafells are the most adorable things I have ever seen. Come here, buddy. Don't kill the blasting cap. Don't fucking murder it. It needs to live so it can blow up the boss to kill it. I think I, re I think I rhymed it with it. Whatever. They can't all be winners. Oh. My base, such as it is, just gets thoroughly wrecked when I talk too much. Come here, buddy. Back we go. Come here, buddy. You need to back up off me, buddy. Thank you. Don't kill the blasting cap. Don't kill the blasting cap, bitch. There we go. Not like they can hear me. If they did, I probably wouldn't say bitch. I'd be like, please don't do that. Please make sure not to do that. That's probably not a good idea. That's okay. No, no. It's, it's alright. I understand. You know, just, just make sure next time that we don't kill it. That's all. You just gotta be careful. That's all. You're doing a good job. It's okay. Got you on the head. Give you cookies. All that shit. I mean, it's the theory of gift. I know I'm just as guilty of it as everybody else. Come here, Mr. McQuencher. Fuck off. Stabby. Don't kill the blasting cap. I will laugh so hard if the tank dies. Aw. Okay! Sabathon! Aw. I'm sad. I think I got, like, two hits off. Uh, can't use that. Not gonna use that. Not gonna use that. We're gonna blow shit up. Kabooms. But Lollafells are the most adorable things in the history of mankind. So that was actually the uh, second one I leveled to 50. I leveled one of the bunny people. I think they're called Viera. I leveled one of them to 50 to check out, you know, the new streamline questing. At which point I was just the crushing disappointment of finding out that the Titan quests were still pretty much all there. And I'm like, God damn it. Oh, this quest makes me so mad. This quest game makes me so mad, that is. If it was just one quest, I could deal with it, but it's like 15. But, uh, but, 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 okay, we're gonna do this, that's fine. But, uh, I got her to level 50, and the thing is, I quite literally did only, um, I did only the main story quest and the class quest up to level 45. And I think I did the hunting log through like level 15 or something like that, but that was it. And I still managed to get to level 46 before I hit that wall where I had to actually start finding other means of doing experience. And that was literally because the quest, one quest was level 46 and the next quest was level 49. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta make up three levels. And then I found on the Lollafell during my second attempt uh, that there were actually extra dungeon quests that were optional. I didn't realize that they that were there. And, you know, in the second attempt, I think I did three of the dungeons. There's something like five or six optional dungeons or something crazy like that that you can do. I think I did three of them and I still managed to get level 
49 before I even got to Mordona. And yet even there, I still managed to, to hit a block at one of the level 50 quests because I was level 49 and a half when I hit one of the level 50 quests and was like, ah, shit. It's like, Tammy, you're going to have to make me do a roulette, aren't you? Like, how dare you make me play the game? That's not fair. I mean, honestly, the reason I play with a controller is because, one, it's more comfortable for my hand. Uh, playing with the keyboard and mouse, it's one of the reasons I don't really play WoW too terribly much, just because, you know, I got surgery on... I mean, the reason I stopped playing Final Fantasy XIV last time was because I got surgery on my wrist to remove a ganglion cyst because, you know, it hurt to play video games or, you know, like, it was impossible to do push-ups, etc., etc. Um... So I got surgery to get it removed, which basically meant that I couldn't use my left hand for, you know, a couple of weeks. And I had very limited function, limited range of movement for, you know, a few months after that point. Don't need that. Don't need that either. And in that meantime, because I can only use one hand, I actually started playing Final Fantasy XI some as well. But I started playing WoW because you can theoretically, with a 12-button mouse, you can you know, do most basic stuff in the game just by using the mouse because it's fucking, wow, it's not exactly difficult to level in it. You know, I mean, I, I would go so far as to say that leveling in Final Fantasy XIV is theoretically more difficult because it requires a lot more positional stuff. You know, I mean, WoW can sometimes require more and sometimes require CC and whatever, but for the most part, you know, it doesn't require near as much positional bullshit that Final Fantasy XIV does. Like, this is a more complete leveling package, you know what I mean? But, uh, so I started playing WoW again, and I just kind of stuck with it because, like, I'm an idiot, and why not, I guess. And by that point, you know, five or six months into just sort of putzing around with WoW, I'm like, oh, I can play Final Fantasy XIV again, and it was that typical RPG trope of mine where, you know, I go back, and this happens not just with Final this is any RPG that I play where... If I stop playing it for any length of time, for a few weeks to a few months, whatever, and I try to go back, I've already forgotten most of the story. And at that point, I'm like, so either I can, you know, I can either, you know, start the game over again completely. Uh, I can look up some kind of, you know, cliff notes of what the fuck is going on. Or, you know, I could just, you know, never play the game again, which is usually what ends up happening. I'm just like, well... Yes, I'm never touching this game again because I'm not, I'm not starting from the beginning. Like, I literally never finished Final Fantasy IX because I stopped playing for like a month and a half, two months. Came back, I'm pretty sure I was, you know, probably a few hours away from the end. I was very, fairly close if I remember correctly. I was on the third disc. Maybe there's four discs, I don't know. But I remember being on the third disc reloading the game and just being like, what the fuck is going on? I don't remember anything that I'm doing, why I'm here, and then I just kind of looked and went, okay, I guess I'm never playing this again, and then just turned the game off and never touched it again. Because I had no idea what was going on. I got distracted by the story, the, the controller thing, but yeah, I play the controller because it's easier for my hand, and also because it kind of feels like, it feels weird to play a Final Fantasy game with a keyboard and mouse. It's just, I know that sounds strange, but that's, that's where my mind goes. Wabba wabba fair wabba fair wabba wabba fair. Hey cool, I received player commendations. Fuck yeah, buddy. And honestly, the key, I mean, and also, you know, I had enough training playing well with x -Patter for several years that this, this control setup is really a lot more <laughs> advanced than the, the jank shit that I was been, that I'd been using for several years. Uh, this is way better. You know what? I'm gonna use a chocobo keep. Ulda, please. One trip to Ulda, please. Yeah, see? Uh. We leave the hospital to greet. Wait, what? Christ. 
Hang on. I'm going to use this moment to, one, rest my throat for a minute or two, and two, respond to something right quick. <laughs> 